read with me. It's so much fun and you'll agree that it's easy when you start to read with me. Read along with the words I say. Keep on trying, then someday you'll be reading by yourself. You can do it. First you watch and listen. Then get right to it and say the words with me. Don't forget, you can read along with these stories over and over again. Start to read, start to read with me. A whole wide world of wonder is waiting. When you start to read, when you start to read with me. We're gonna have a good time. <laughs> I want to go home. Written by Sarah Roberts. Pictures by Joe Matthew. Today was going to be a big day for me. I was going to visit Granny Bird. It was my first trip away from home. My friends took me to the bus stop. Goodbye, Big Bird. Have fun, they said. I will miss you, I said. I thought the bus would never get there. It went over hills, under bridges, and through tunnels. Gee, I said to myself, I hope Granny is waiting for me. At last, the bus stopped. Granny Bird waved to me. My little big bird. I am so happy to see you, Granny said. Me too, Granny, I said. After lunch, we went to the beach. What a nice grandson, Granny's friend said. But I did not want to talk to them. I wanted to go into the water. Go on, dear. I can watch you from here, said Granny. I ran to the water. It was the first time I had ever seen the sea. Wow, it sure is big, I said. I had fun all afternoon. I raced the waves. I played in the sand. Granny and I had supper on the porch. We watched the sunset. Time for bed, Granny said. Granny tucked me in, kissed me goodnight, and turned on the nightlight. Sleep tight, she said. But I did not sleep tight. I thought about home. And the more I thought, the sadder I felt. I miss Sesame Street, I thought. And I miss my nest. A tear rolled down my cheek. I miss my friends. I want to go home. I cried myself to sleep. I was not hungry at breakfast. I just looked at my bird seed pancakes. What is wrong, dear? Granny asked. I think I want to go home, I said sadly. I know what is wrong. You are homesick, Granny said. Will I have to go to a doctor, I asked. No, Big Bird, she said. You will get better all by yourself. Then Granny gave me some picture postcards. You can send them to friends back home. Yes, I said happily. You write what I say. I will write my name myself. We mailed the postcards on our way to the beach. Then I said, I am going to build a sand castle. I will make it look just like Sesame Street. 
I got my pail and my shovel and started to dig. I worked and worked. At last, it was built. Look, Granny, I said. I live here, and Ernie and Bert live there, and just then, a big wave crashed onto the beach. It rolled right over my wonderful sand castle. Oh, what a shame, Granny said. But don't cry, Big Bird. Why don't you look for some pretty seashells? They would make nice gifts for your friends. I walked down the beach. I found a big shell for Ernie. A little spotted shell for Bert. And a round shell that looks like a cookie. This one is for Cookie Monster, I said. Thinking of my friends made me feel homesick. Then I saw something on the beach. It was a soggy old boot. I picked it up. I heard someone laugh. I looked around and saw a boy. What are you going to do with that boot? He asked. Give it to Oscar, I said. Then I told the boy about my friend Oscar. He is a grouch. He likes yucky things. The boy told me his name was Wally. He lived in town. Come on, he said. I want to show you my secret cave. Then I told Wally about my friend Snuffy. He lives in a cave, I said. I wish I had a friend like that, Wally said. That night, I ate two bowls of bird seed. I told Granny all about my new friend, Wally. Granny said, I am happy that you feel better. Later, in bed, I missed my nest a little bit. But I thought about my new friend, Wally. I could not wait to see him again. Soon, I was sound asleep. Every day, Wally and I played together. We played ball in the water. We played follow the leader. We made sand forts and tunnels. And every day, we shared an ice pop. Then it was my last day at Granny's house. It was a cold, rainy day. Wally came to say goodbye. I felt sad. It felt almost like being homesick. I will write to you, Wally said. I will write to you, too, I said. Then the rain stopped. The sun came out. A rainbow lit up the sky. Wally and I ran outside. We played in the puddle. Then Granny said, Time to go, Big Bird. But you can come back to visit next summer. You bet I will, I said. Bert and the Missing Mop Mix-Up. Written by Sarah Roberts. Pictures by Joe Matthew. One day, Bert was painting. It was hard work. It made Bert thirsty. He got out the milk. Black. Bert dropped the milk. Ernie, yelled Bert. Help! Ernie came running. 
Why did you pour milk on the floor? He asked. I did not pour it, said Bert. I spilled it. Please go out and find a mop. And hurry. Ernie ran down Sesame Street. He saw Betty Lou. Bert needs a mop. Do you have one? He asked Betty Lou. Gee, I don't know, she said. But I will look for one. Betty Lou walked down the street. If Bert needs a map, he must be going on a trip, she said. I will look for a map. Then I will ask him to send me a postcard. Betty Lou knocked on Oscar's trash can. Clang, clang. Who woke me up, growled Oscar. I did, said Betty Lou. Bert needs a map. Do you have one? He asked. How could I know? Yelled Oscar. I am asleep. Blam went the lid. Oscar peeked his head out of the trash can. Now he was wide awake. I will find Bert a mat, growled Oscar. Then maybe everyone will leave me alone. Then I came along. Hi, Oscar, I said. How are you today? Rotten, yelled Oscar. Bert needs a mat. I am looking for one, and I hate helping. I ran home. Bert needs a mitt, I thought. He must want to play baseball. Maybe I can play, too. I got my bat and began to look for a mitt. I looked everywhere. I saw no mitt. But I did see Grover. Bert needs a mitt. Do you have one? I asked him. I will look for one, said Grover. And he ran home to look. Bert needs a mitten, Grover told his mother. I will help find one, said Grover's mother. Oh, good, said Grover. Bert will be so happy. Just then, Harry came to Grover's window. Come out to play, called Harry. Not now, said Grover. Bert needs a mitten. I am looking for one. Harry smiled to himself. He ran to the pet shop. I know how Bert feels, Harry said. Everyone needs a kitten. Kittens are so cute. Harry saw a nice kitten. I will give you to Bert. You will make him happy, Harry told the kitten. Purr, went the kitten. Bert looked at the clock. He looked at the puddle on the floor. He tapped his foot. Where is Ernie, he said. And where is that mop? Suddenly the door opened and everyone rushed in. Everyone had something to give to Bert. Betty Lou had a big map. Oscar had an old mat. I had a baseball mitt. Grover had a warm mitten. Harry had a furry kitten. Bert looked at the map, the mat, the mitt, the mitten, and the kitten. What's going on? cried Bert. All I needed was a mop. And where is Ernie? Just then, Ernie came home. Look, Bert, said Ernie. I found a mop. You're too late, Ernie, said Bert. 
I don't need it anymore. The kitten lapped up all the milk. Everyone laughed. <laughs> Two Wheels for Grover by Dan Elliott. Pictures by Joe Matthew. Grover was so happy. He was going to visit his cousin. He kissed his mother goodbye. He left with Uncle Jed. Uncle Jed drove out into the country. Soon, Uncle Jed said, here we are. Everyone was happy to see Grover. Aunt Edna made a picnic to welcome him. After lunch, Rosie said, let's go bike riding. He ran to get her bike. I do not have a bike, said Grover. We have an extra bike, said Rosie happily. Frank got a big new bike for his birthday. You can ride his little old one. Grover looked at the bike. It looked old. But it did not look little. Oh, dear, he thought. I do not know how to ride a bike. But I do not want Rosie to know. My mommy will not let me he said. Grover watched Rosie ride off on her bike. Frank called to Grover, come play with me in my tree house. Grover climbed up the ladder. You used to be afraid to climb, said Frank. I was just a baby then, Grover smiled. Now I am the best climber upper, he said. Grover stopped smiling. I wish I could ride a bike, he said. The next morning, Aunt Edna had good news. Your mother said that you may ride a bike. Grover tried to smile. Come on, Grover, said Rosie. She ran from the table to get her bike. Grover followed Rosie, but he walked slowly. I cannot ride today, he said. I have a sore foot. Oh, too bad, Grover, said Rosie. She was on her bike and ready to go. You can go without me, Grover said sadly. Every day, Grover played with his cousins. They went swimming. They played hide and seek. They went to the store to buy ice cream. Every day, Rosie said the same thing. Let's go for a bike ride. But Grover always said, no, I hurt my hand. Or, no, I do not feel like bike riding now. One day, Rosie rode off to visit Farmer Finn. Grover and Frank played cards. Grover asked Frank a question. When did you learn to ride a bike? When I was seven, said Frank. Wow, said Grover. That is very old. That is older than I am. Then Frank asked Grover when he learned. I never did cried Grover. I do not know how to ride a bike. Don't cry, said Frank. I will teach you how. Grover shook his head. No, said Grover. Big Bird tried to teach me. I cannot learn. Frank smiled. Big Bird's bike was too big. I bet you can ride my little old bike. Frank held his old bike, and Grover got on it. What if I fall? asked Grover. I will catch you, said Frank. So Grover pedaled the bike. Frank ran next to it. 
the bike wobbled along the road. Help! yelled Grover. Don't worry, said Frank. I will not let you fall. Up and down the road went Grover on the bike. Up and down the road ran Frank. That's it, Grover, he said. You are doing great. Suddenly, Rosie zoomed down the road. She shouted to them, Farmer Finn is giving away kittens. Grover's eyes lit up. I love furry kittens. May I have one? He asked. Yes, said Rosie. But hurry before they are all gone. Rosie headed for Farmer Finn. Follow me, she called, and Grover did. He zoomed after Rosie. Grover picked a cute orange kitten. I had to be Speedy to get you, he said. So I will call you Speedy. He put the kitten in his bike basket. Then he rode off. Purr, went the kitten. Grover was so happy. Grover returned to Sesame Street. He gave his mother a big hug. Guess what, Mommy? He said. I can ride a bike. That is wonderful, said his mother. You really are growing up. Now I know what to get you for your birthday.